So we're here at Alcoholic Architecture, which effectively is a breathable cloud of gin and tonic. We've taken alcohol and exploded it to an immersive, inhabitable scale. So you can literally walk inside a cloud where if your friend is a metre away from you, you won't be able to see them at all. There's so much alcohol in the air between you. Everyone has to put on a, a poncho, which not only gives them a monkish aspect with the hoods, but also it protects their hair and clothes because they're going to a club. If you have a gin and tonic, it's actually quite sticky as well. One of the great things is, because it goes uh, straight into the bloodstream, bypassing the liver, you have to, I guess, consume 40% less with the, the uh, corresponding decrease in calorific uptake to have the same physiological effect. So at Alcoholic Architecture, we're very careful to limit people's time within the installation to about an hour, which means that that's the equivalent of about two units or so. So it's, it's, it's at a safe level. We also ask everyone to breathe responsibly. I think the concept is brilliant, really good. Um, learned more about monks creating alcohol than I ever knew. Don Perignon, who knew he was a, a monk? A monk. <laughs> You can taste it when you walk in there. Um, it, I don't feel too drunk, um, but I think it's meant to be one drink is when you're in there. But um, it's quite overwhelming at first when you walk in because um, you can barely see in front of your face. Um, so that's quite disorientating. We found all sorts of ways to consume alcohol. This is the first time people have been breathing it, and I think people just people just love the novelty of it, you know, the, the excitement. What I quite like as well is that by giving people a new way to do it, they start engaging with one another. So people come down here, they, they arrive as strangers and leave as friends. 